and welcome to Charged Online. My name is Grace. I'm the lay pastor for youth and students at St John's Egham. At Charged, we're here to love God, love one another as we love ourselves and to go and love our communities as well. If this is your first time with us, you are so, so welcome and we really hope uh, you enjoy the content today. As we're leading up to Christmas, the time when we remember how Jesus came into the world as a tiny baby, we've turned our attention to the Old Testament. That's all the events that happened before Jesus was born. And we're seeking to discover how Jesus's story can be seen, it's foreshadowed in what we find there. And that is the Jesus storyline. I'm excited. Are you excited? Now, this week, you've been sending in some of your cheesiest jokes for our very own intern, Carrie, to judge. So we're going to head over to Carrie's Cheeseometer. So, Carrie, we've got some very cheesy jokes for you this week. Amazing. Um, I, I hope that you enjoy them. They've been sent in by our young people. Uh, so to kick off, uh, this one, I think this one's great. Um, uh, then God said, come forth and receive eternal life. Moses came fifth and received a toaster. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah, um, I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, and then similar ilk, similar ilk. This is another Bible-based one. Um, how does Moses make his tea? I don't know. How does Moses make his tea? He brews it. Oh, okay, no. that felt all right. That was better than the last one. Okay. I think, I think. Fair play, fair play. Um, why is this another one? Here we go. Now, these ones have been sent in by our very own curate. So um, let's see how uh, how well he does. <laughs> A guy drove past me in his car and threw a lump of cheddar at me. I thought to myself, that's mature. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that one. That is quite a good one. Uh, let's have another one of those. Oh, I like this one. What's a pirate's favourite cheese? I don't know. Cheddar. No, that's terrible. <laughs> was no. it the delivery or? It was all, all of it. No. Oh, well, was okay. Uh, another one sent in by our uh, a young person. My friend said that his back was killing him, so I uh, I called the police. That was, that was okay. It's okay. Was kind of okay. Right. Yeah. Want to hear a joke about a piece of paper? Never mind, it's terrible. I like that joke. <laughs> <laughs> harsh, harsh. Well, um, so out of all of those if you can remember the carry, which would you say is the cheesiest and the winner this week for our prize? Oh gosh, I think back now. I think, I think I'll go with he brews it. He brews it, yeah. the classic Moses joke. Okay, <laughs> well done to whoever sent that in. We'll be sending a prize uh, to you, your door. Thank you so much, Carrie. We'll see you again next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Brilliant. Time for some worship now and we're going to head over to the Jenkins clan in just a moment. But before we do, let me pray for us as we begin to worship God today. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you come and fill wherever we are, wherever we're watching this? Would you make your presence known with us today? And may our praise be a sweet sound to your ear. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
sing a little louder Sing a little louder Sing a little louder Sing a little louder Sing a little You are here 
you're working Even when I don't feel it you're working You never stop, never stop working Never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it you're working Even when I don't feel it you're working You never stop, never stop working Never stop, never stop working Each week, we want to make space to ask the question, how are you? What have your highlights been? What have your lowlights been? And maybe what has God been doing in your life this week? And this week, uh, John, one of our young people, has been heading about around Egham to ask these questions to some of you guys. So let's take a look. What's been your highlight of the week? Um, my highlight of the week is I made shortbread. <laughs> And it was very good and nice. Was it? Yeah. What, what's been a bad thing about this week? Um, I ate all the shortbread and there's none left. That's really sad. Yeah. You, why didn't you save it in for me? Dunno. Thank you very much, Mr. Nordy. Hello, Micah. How are you? Hey. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine, thank you. Um, what's been one highlight of this week for you? Oh, I didn't go into school yesterday. That was good. But it wasn't that good either. A bit of an acid attack, but... Uh, oh, always so lovely. Long. Well Good done, luck. exactly. Um, anything bad about this week? Obviously having the asthma thing and that's pretty much it. Nice. Okay. Thanks. Bye. What was the highlight of your week? I got an A3 in my history test. What was the worst thing about your week? Um, I had to get up. Hello, Mr. Makepeace. How are you? I'm good. Uh, what's, what's, your been, what's your highlight this week been? Uh, my highlight of the week was winning the... Halloween uh, hope competition um, and beating Micah. That was quite nice. What, what did you get for that? Uh, we got a 25 quid Amazon gift card, I heard. Do you know what, you go what you're going to spend it on? I have no idea. Something that will make Micah jealous. Fair enough. Probably a Reading shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what are you going to... Uh, what, what's been your like, the worst thing of this week so far? Uh, doing terribly at my history test. Oh, you can't. You didn't do that bad. I missed it. I missed the test, and then so I had to do it while everyone else was in lesson. So Mr. Wilcox was quite noisy, you know. So, like, yeah. as, as you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will. We're going to turn our attention to the Bible now, but before we dive into that, I have a question for you. Have you ever been asked to do something that you don't? want to do. Now I can think of one obvious example that most teenagers don't want to do is tidy their bedroom. But I want you to have a little think. I'll give you 10 seconds. Try and think of a time when you've been asked to do something you don't want to do. Go. That's it. Time up. Now that uh, example that you've got in your head I want you now to consider some of these questions about that event. How did it make you feel when you were asked to do that thing that you didn't want to do? Now, I want you to consider why were they asking you to do it? And then also to think about why did you not want to do it? 
And when you've thought about those things, I want you to consider what then happened after that. If you did do it, why did you do it? Um, and if you didn't do it, what was the result of not doing it? I'm going to give you about a minute to think about that. Brilliant. Today, we're going to be looking at the story of Abraham and Isaac as we continue in our journey through the Old Testament, looking for glimpses of the Jesus story. And in the story of Abraham, he is asked to do something that we can say he most definitely didn't want to do. So let's open up our Bibles to Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible, chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. And Layla is going to read that for us. So off you go, Layla. Today's reading is from Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. And then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for his burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son and Isaac laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld me from your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there, in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven for a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba. And Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Brilliant. Thank you, Layla. Now you might be thinking, what? <laughs> Why would God ask such a thing? Well, that's what we're going to discover this morning by asking the same questions that I asked of you at the start. Uh, and we're going to keep our Sherlock Holmes detective hats on. We need to be looking out for the clues to Jesus. And we're going to identify what they are a little bit later. Firstly, a bit of context. Last week, we looked at Noah 
and how one righteous man saved the whole world from complete destruction and that those that were connected to him, his family, were saved also. However, we saw that the world still needed another saviour. It was still under the dominion or like the control of sin and death. And so we saw a faint glimmer of what Jesus would come to do by saving the world fully once and for all. And we had our imagery comparison also. After the flood, the sign of God's promises was the rainbow. And for us today, it is the cross. So a little potted history between Noah and Abraham is that the people of the world were still completely wicked. And they even try to build a tower to reach the heavens so that they can be God. So God scatters them and he creates multiple languages to confuse them. And it's at this point that God calls one man to himself, Abraham. And he says, through Abraham, I'm going to create a great nation. And through that nation, I will bless the whole world. And he says, Abraham, your your offspring will be as numerous as the stars and as the grains of sand in the desert. And so Abraham and his wife, Sarah, long for a child. And yet they don't conceive for many, many years. And it was when that they were super old. Abraham was a hundred when they finally had their son, Isaac. Can you imagine what Abraham must have been feeling? He had waited many years for his promised son, his one and only son. And now God was asking him to sacrifice him. Now, if if I was Abraham, I'd be like, Lord, why? Like, I thought you said my offspring was going to be as numerous as the grains of sand. And now you want me to kill my son? How will that even be possible? Or, Lord, I've waited years on the promise that you made me for a child. And now you want me to kill him? Why? To what end? But as far as we know, Abraham doesn't do this. He gets up and he takes his son to be sacrificed. Does Abraham know something about God that we don't know? I wonder also if your Jesus story alarm bells are ringing. We see in this story that God is asking Abraham to do nothing more than he asks of himself. And we know from the ending of the story that it was always God's plan. um, If Abraham went through with it, that he would provide a better sacrifice. So it begs the question, why ask Abraham to do this at all? Well, up to this point, most of the humans that God had created out of an overflow of his love to be in relationship with him, made in his image and likeness, have done nothing other than rebel. God had given them everything that they needed. He knew them inside out. He loved them with an everlasting love. And yet they chose independence from him. God needed to know that the person he had chosen to be the father of his nation, of what would become God's people, he needed to know that he had absolute faith and trust in the character of God. Abraham knew that God keeps his promises. Abraham knew that God was absolutely trustworthy. Abraham knew that God is good. And Abraham knew that God had a bigger plan and so could trust that he was what he was asking had a purpose. Hold on to these thoughts for a moment. We're gonna we're gonna pause and we're just gonna look through the passage um, for the Jesus story elements, because this is such an important story um, in the Jesus storyline leading up to the New Testament of how Jesus, yeah, he was the plan 
Um, and I wonder, I wonder as, as Layla read it through, if you noticed any of these, if you're keeping a keen eye open for them. Well, firstly, as we've already seen, it says, take your only son whom you love. Now, this is almost directly quoted uh, by God um, in the New Testament. When Jesus is baptised, he comes up out of the water and God says, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. It's almost directly the same. That's not a coincidence. Our next image is in verse six. It says, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on Isaac. Now, can you guess what that's a, a reference to in the Jesus story? You'd be right if you said, when he carried his cross, when Jesus carried his cross up the hill to where he would uh, be the ultimate sacrifice. Now, our third image, I hope this is one that you instantly uh, recognise. We read in verse 13, after the angel of the Lord has stopped Abraham and said, no, 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 you don't need to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham looks up and there, caught in the thicket, is a ram caught by its horns. Now, when we read of a ram or a lamb in the Bible, it's often a reference to Jesus, the Lamb of God. As Jesus comes to make the need, the need to sacrifice to God for the atonement of our sins redundant by being the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate lamb for atonement. And our final image, this is not one you would possibly know. So if you, if you had an inkling, well done, because this is something you won't know unless you're told, uh, unless you've learned it previously. Um, but this mountain that they are on, Abraham and Isaac, is in the region of Moria. And this place would become the place 2,000 years later that Jesus would willingly die on. I know. Mind blown. Anyone? <laughs> And if that wasn't enough, this just all gets better when we understand that this provision of Jesus was something God had planned and intended from the beginning, before any of us were born. And the storyline of Jesus running through the life of Abraham and Isaac shows us that even before most of the people in the Old Testament were born, God knew what was going to happen. And he knew what it was going to cost him. He knew what you were going to cost him. And he went ahead anyway, because he says, you're worth it. How incredible is that? I am so excited for the next parts of our journey in this story, but that's it for today. Well done, everyone, if you managed to identify some of those images. And just remember, God said, you're worth it. Hello, my name's Sue, for anyone who doesn't know me, and I'm the prayer development leader at St John's. And Grace has asked me to do the prayer section. So I thought we could maybe have a look over the, over the next few weeks at, at different types of prayer. And um, when I've been looking at this, as, as we all know, it's any type of prayer is good doesn't matter how we pray, doesn't matter what words we use, doesn't matter how long or short or um, loud or quiet our prayers are, God hears them all. Even sometimes when we don't say a word, even sometimes we, we don't have the words, but God knows what's on our heart. It's all good. But I thought we'd look at some structured type of prayer and some things that, that I find helpful. So one of the, the thing we're going to look at today is called Palms Down palms up prayer. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. And this is how you do it. So first of all, find a quiet space. Um, doesn't matter what time of day it is, doesn't matter where you are, but if you can find a quiet space, then that's great. And what we're going to do is place your palms face down on your lap. And as you do that, you're going to bring to God anything that's on your heart, any worries, any anxieties, any people that you're worried about or you want to pray for, any places, anything at all that you want to bring to God. 
and you keep your palms down, it might be helpful sometimes to imagine Jesus' hands underneath yours as he takes on all your worries and all your prayers and all your concerns. And you can just give to God everything that's on your heart. Doesn't matter how long it takes. And when you've done this, you're going to turn your palms over so the back of your hands are on your legs. And this is symbolic of receiving from God. So you're going to receive God's peace. You're going to receive his courage, his power, maybe his direct action for some of the prayers you've just given to him. And just having your palms up just shows that you want to receive from God all he has for you. So you're just going to stay for a few moments in that position with your with your palms upwards, just receiving from God. And maybe in the quietness, you might even have a scripture, a Bible verse that comes to mind, or you might have a picture of something that comes to mind, a memory, or someone's face might come into your head. And that's great. Okay, just, just let it come and just keep asking God to give you more. So what he's doing is he's replacing your worries and your fears with his power and his presence and his peace. When you've sat and received for a while, then maybe just, just give it a few more moments. And then you're just going to thank God, thank him for his presence. Thank him that he hears everything that we ask for, everything that's on our minds, everything that's on our hearts. And this is something you can do at any, any time of the day at all. Even underneath your desk at school, if you're worried about something, put your hands down, give it to God, put your hands up, receive his peace. Anywhere you are, if you're on the bus, same, hands down, give it over to God, hands up, receive from him. Well, that's all we have time for this week, but I hope that's been interesting, you've learnt something new this morning, um, or you've just had the time to sit and be in the presence of God. I love Sue's prayer idea, I've used it this week uh, already. Um, so yeah, let's just keep pressing in and do let us know if uh, we can be praying for you in any way. Other than that, I should say, do join us on Tuesday for our sign language choir. You don't have to uh, know sign language to join. We certainly don't. We've learnt uh, some of these for carols for Christmas. Just let us know. Uh, email me, grace at stjohnsegham.com. And equally on Fridays, five till six, we have a gaming social. And seven till eight, we have a creative social. Uh, we'd love to see you there. It's, we know it's really hard and it's dark and it's, you know, just a little bit uh, tricky at the moment. Though Christmas is coming, which is really joyful. Uh, we'd love to hang out with you and uh, uh, just have some fun together. So if not, we'll see you next week. Next week is our in-person on Zoom. Um, so do, again, send me an email if you'd like to join in with that. God bless for now. <laughs>